Hey everyone, today you will learn how to handle loading states with server actions in Next.js. We're going to use a hook called use action state, which will allow you to update the state based on the form action. The form action is basically a function that will be triggered when you submit the form. This is not a Next.js specific feature, it's a feature from React. So you don't even have to use Next.js for this tutorial, but I'm going to use it. In this video, I'm just going to show you a few things. First, how to handle loading states or error states using server actions. How to handle the input reset problem. Also, I'll show you how to update the state from use action state. So let's get started. But first, let's understand the problem a bit. Let's say you have a form where you have this submit button, which will trigger this on submit function. And there you will handle different states like loading, error. Then you send an API call. If the API call is successful, you set the data. If there's an error, you set the error state. And finally, you disable the loading state. All of this work, but kind of manual. Use action state makes it much more simpler. So let's see how we can use it. All right, so I have a brand new Nexus 15 app. I have deleted all the boilerplate code. And one thing I forgot to mention that this hook is actually not in stable release. It is only available in React's Canary and experimental versions. If you're using Next.js, then you don't need to do anything. If not, you might need to install the Canary version. So let's first create the form. First, you need to make this component a client component using use client directive. Now, don't make your page component a client component because it will make all the children components a client component too. I have an entire tutorial about this. Uh, you can check that out if you're interested. But for this tutorial, it's just fine. So let's add the code. I'm going to paste some code here. So basically, we have this form. And we have this email input. Then this uh, password input. And finally, a button. These class names are actually coming from Daisy UI. Daisy UI is a Tailwind UI library. It's really awesome. It's really beautiful. I have a crash course if you are interested, but you don't need to use it. This is just for styling purposes. And now we need to create a server action. However, you can still use a normal function. A server action is basically a function that will be running on the server instead of your browser. So you will get all the server side resources, all the APIs. Plus, you will be able to use your database directly from there. So, to create one, we need to create another file. Let's call it actions.js. And here, we need to add a use server directive. This will make all the functions a uh, server function. So, let's create a function called login. This server action actually have two parameter. First one is the previous state. This will take two parameter. First one is the previous state. And second one is the form data. The previous state is basically the data that will be returned from this function if the function runs more than once. And if the function runs only once, then the previous state will be the initial data. So let's get the user input from the form data object, so const email. We need to use the get method. And you need to pass the input name and make sure your input has this name attribute, otherwise it won't work. And then the password. And now you can add all of your server side evaluation checks. However, I'm just gonna add a simple one. We're gonna check if email and password exist or not. If it doesn't, we're going to send an error. So if email doesn't exist or password doesn't exist, we're going to return an object which will have the error property containing the message. Please fill in all the details. Then message will be null. This is for the success message. Otherwise, we can send our API request, but I'm going to mock that. So let's add a function called wait. It will wait for three seconds just to mimic the API call. And let's call the wait function. 
and then we can assume that the request was successful so we can return a success message so login successful and that's it for the server action now we can use the use action state hook so let's import that from react and let's call the use action state you need to pass the login function the second one will be an initial state this initial state will be actually the previous state when the function will be first called and when the function will be called more than once either one of these data will be the previous state so i'm going to pass a simple object message no and error no it will return an array it will have three things first the state then this form action will be the function that you will pass in this case the server action and then the is pending state so i'm going to copy this thing the state variable is actually going to be whatever is returned from the server action so i'm just going to disable the button when the is pending state is true so just go to the button and add disabled to is pending and then i will display the error message and success message if there is any and let's also destructure the variables but to trigger the form action you need to go to the form tag and add an action property and just pass the form action so that's it it should work let's try that so if i just click on login it should throw me an error message and it says error please fill in all the details if i add email and some password and login now the button is disabled and now we have another message login successful so this is how you can actually use use action state but there is a problem actually two problem first you can see the input values has been removed but you might not want that you want the input to be there it used to work in nextjs 14 but in next 15 it's not working anymore i don't know if it's a bug or it was intended if it's a bug hopefully they will fix it otherwise uh, we need to handle this manually so i'm going to show you how to do that so just go to the form action and here you have access to email and password the user input you can send it back as a state value so let's create an object called form fields and that should be email and password and on the return object just pass the form fields and go to the form and also destructure the form fields add the previous input value as default value so default value would be form fields dot email we'll copy this we'll do the same thing for the password and that should be it so let's just submit again login and now the user input is still there i can try again login the input is still there but one problem you might face when you want to update the state that is returned from the use action state for example this login message will always be there unless you trigger the form action again to get a different response but by default there is no function to change that there are some solution out there i'm gonna show you mine it might not be perfect also this hook is still not in stable release so they might add a new function to change the state but until then we have to do it on our own 
So I'm going to create a custom hook for this. So let's create a file. Use resetable action state dot js. First, we need to import these three hooks: use action state, use effect, and use state. And then create a hook. It will take initial state and uh, action. And let's export it. So the idea here is that we're going to create a new state using the use state hook. And whenever we have a response from our form action, we're going to take the data and put it in our new state. And we're going to use that new state in our form, which will have the set state function. So you will be able to change the state whatever way you want. So let's create the state. And the initial value will be the initial state. And now let's call the use action state. Pass the action and then initial state. And let's get the return values. So the state, I'm going to call it data, then form action, then is pending. And now we're going to add a use effect. And we're going to run the use effect whenever the pending state is changed. And we only want to update the state when we have a new response from our form action. So we can do that by adding a if statement. If is pending is false, then we can set the state. So set state will be actually data. For changing the state, we can use two functions. First, reset the state entirely. So we can call the set state and then pass the initial state. Then another function for updating the state for partial update, I mean. So const update state. It will take a new state as a parameter. And let's call the set state. Let's get the previous state and Spread the previous state and new state. And now we can return our states and functions. So we can pass state, form action, is pending, reset state, and update state. It is time for us to replace the hooks. So in the page, I'm going to change it to use resetable action state and I will pass an object action will be login and then initial state and change the destructuring to object destructuring we will have update state reset state and everything should work fine and we have an error here it's an hydration error it is happening because of some extension some browser extension that i'm using i don't know which one so you can ignore it so everything should work fine so let's click on login we have an error message let's add the data Now we have a success message. So let's say you want to remove this success message or error message after five seconds. You can do that using a use effect hook. So let's add a use effect hook. And here we also want to run the effect function whenever the is pending state has been changed. So add is pending as dependency. And inside the function, we need to add a set timeout.
and let's say I want to wait for three seconds and in the set timer function we can add a if statement if is pending is false then we can call the update state function and here we can pass message and error to null so it will reset the error and message state but we'll keep the form fields the user input so i'll click on login and now we have the error message and the error disappears let's fill the inputs now we have a success message and the message disappears again and if you want to reset the state entirely you can call the reset state function Let's click on login. And you can see it has reset the entire state, including the form fields. So that's how you can use this use action state hook to handle loading or error state with server actions. If the video has been helpful for you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.